The air was clement and the light lingered with promise. Yet the breeze coiled, swirled gusty omens, the kind that led you to know, know that something was a kilter. It was there in the edges, in the margins, in the way the forest leaned, it loomed imminent. Yes, there was just something in that day. Collie's growl grumbled low, then snarled into a bark. He crouched near to the ground, alert at my feet, at the verge of Coolnamuck's woodland. With the sun sinking on the western horizon, I barely discerned another moving shape, moving towards the girl. He was a tall man, loping slow, tugged his mare alongside him, her hooves echoing on the cobbles. His hair was dark, almost black, and something in his attire made me think him a holy man, his reverence. Is this the village they call Carrick McGriffin Child? I'm called Iva, not Child. And it suits you well, Iva, God's child. I'm pleased to make your acquaintance. They call me Edmund. It is Carrick McGriffin, sir, and this would be Carrick Beg, right at the edges of it. What is your business here? I'm told it be a good place for a man to gather himself. The maiden followed in Edmund's wake, a tiny minuscule thing, elfin-like, adorned in scarlet robes with charcoal buttons. I had often sensed her flirting around me, free, careless, yet assured, bearing gardenias, delicate and scented. I'm here, she said, always. You don't need to be letting them know about me. Regina, they call me. I knew that already, knew her fate, and knew that she would wed Edmund and that mighty towers and turrets would grow to the skies further downstream. That had been revealed to me. She has seer's ways, they'd say. It was no matter, for I knew too where my future lay. They'd made Edmund the great Earl and that I'd be attached to his house. They would seek Regina out, wretches and nobles alike, her counsel and portents sacrosanct. She'd soothed them best she could, scented in gardenias, her vermilion skirts fastened with indigo trailing behind her.